your lesson on hand painted photography. Get out your sketch pads. Your title today is experimenting with acrylic. And before you paint with your colors on your photography, like my example here, I'd like for you to test on a page in your sketch pad with the acrylic. And this is going to be your experimenting with acrylic page. So write that title now in your sketch pad. Okay? Here's an example from yesterday, what I've done with another class. This was the photograph. They were in a stick hut, and I made them in a grassy hill with the sunset. Okay? These are some things you guys can do with hand-painted photography. Here's another example. If you guys remember this had a little bit of sky and then a wall over here, I also was able to change it. Are you guys ready to look at our famous artist of the day? Okay, his name is Ron Burns. Can you say that name? Ron, Ron Burns. Burns. He is a famous artist right now in the modern period. He's still alive. Can you see what he got famous for? Animals. He got so famous by trying something new with colors, he's getting commissioned by Looney Tunes. You see how he uses colors in extreme ways? And I'm hoping for today to encourage you to do this. See how he uses extreme colors? He added some purple on there. He got commissioned by a zoo. And he's famous for doing animals with really extreme different colored backgrounds, which I'm hoping you guys can show me with your hand-painted photography today. So that's why I have Ron Burns, a famous artist here, who used color. Did he use color in different ways? Yeah. Yes, and I'm hoping you can be bold with your paints on your hand-painted photography. All right, we're going to use acrylic paints, so if you don't want to get your clothes messy, I suggest a smock. What we're going to do next are get your supplies, water, we're going to get a back brush, and we always start with what? The foreground or the background first? What should we start with? Background. The background, because then you want to overlap, right? And that's what the fat brush is for, and we're going to use the thinner brush for more detailed things in the foreground. Okay, I have my own photography. When it's original photography and you're painting on it, it's still your original art. And this is really popular in California, where I'm from right now, and artists are exhibiting hand-painted photography. And they're making a lot of money doing commission works. Now what I'm doing is starting with my sky first. So I'm going to experiment, test out my color on my experimenting with acrylic page. And then if I like this color, what I'm going to do is totally change, kind of like our featured artist, Ron Burns did the color of my photograph. I'm going to make a different color background. Now do you guys see what's happening here? Am I, I, am I doing the paint thick enough or do I need a thicker spread? What do you think? Thicker. With your photography, you want to totally cover the fact that it's photography. And you can go right off the page. I have mine mounted on cardstock so I could show you guys this easily. But as you can see, if I'm showing black there, then I don't have enough paint on my brush. So I'm going to get a really thick layer of paint. And this is the same way Vincent Van Gogh used paint. Remember Starry Night? How he had a really thick and cloth? That's really important in hand painted photography that you do your paint really thick or else you're going to make your paper, if you don't have cardstock, buckle and rip. So first we're starting with the thick brush, and we're going to do our background sky, if you have sky. And we are studying the elements here, which are sky. What else are the elements? You guys name them. So water, 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 earth, fire, 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 sky. All right, so those are the elements. So your photography today that you're going to be hand painting should have some of these elements on it. Uh, in it. You don't have to go right over the edge if you don't want to. If you want to show maybe something like this at the edge to show a frame around your hand-painted photography, you can. But I'm just showing you a quick example of how to do it so we could spend most of the class time with you painting on your own photography. Okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm starting with nice thick layers of paint and then I'm blending. We're studying sky. So to do the sky from one color to another. See how I'm going back and forth? That's called blending or feathering. So I'm slowly going from the pink down to the more yellow hue. And I'd like for you guys to do that, unless you're going to go extreme like our fe featured artist Ron Burns and just do a solid color background. There's really no way to do hand painted photography. Unless you're going really thin like that, you can see the black through it. That's not ideal. Remember, I want you to use lots of paint. Our teacher's aide, Mr. T and I, will be here to give you more paint if you need it on your palette. But we're going to start with pea size amounts so we don't waste the acrylic paint. Acrylic is a little more expensive. It's thicker, and if you are with younger kids, working with younger kids, those listening to my art lessons, you can still use poster paint, but still do thick, logged-on paint as to hide the fact that you are working 
on a photograph because that's going to make it look like original painting, an original painting, and no longer a photograph. That's what I'm trying to do with my class right now, but if you want it to be see-through and you have really thick cardstock, you can do that as well and have some of it seen through. Okay, now can you guys see how quickly I'm working on the sky? <laughs> no, I'm trying to cover the sky quickly so you guys have most of the time to work on your own. Now I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to cut this around and frame it, but after I do the sky, which I totally changed the color of on my photograph, and I'm trying to get you guys to take risks and try new things, and then even try different things on your experimenting sheet, try out the colors before you go on your photograph. Now I'm not going to finalize it and make it all perfect. What I'm going to do is mix a new color. I am going to change the color of the butterfly in this picture to a what color butterfly. <laughs> what color am I making the butterfly? <coughs> blue, a blue butterfly. Because you guys have the artistic license as artists to totally change the colors of what you're working with. And I'm going to follow our featured artist, Ron Burns, and do some really extreme colors. Now, what colors am I mixing to make purple? Blue and red. Blue and red. Excellent. So I got some purple here. I mixed blue and red for some different shades of blue. And if you can't see, make sure you can. And I'm just having some different colors than my original photograph. And also, this is a little more extreme, kind of like our featured artist, Ron Burns, does. For me, the real extreme color is different than the original. So I'm going to try to go a little more extreme. But as you can see, this is how to do it. You paint right on with thick layers of paint. What I'm going to let you guys do, we're going to blow yours up, and you're going to have time to do this. That's the end of my lesson. At the end, I will take a little blip of this when it's done. So you guys get started. You ready to get started? Larger. 